Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, today we received a form from uh, a member of the Memorial County Memorial Valley Rail Trail Regional Committee. Okay. And said that um, his and the alternate's appointments need to be renewed and a form signed, and there's a form in the folder I left for you for signatures. You might want to add that to the agenda under um, committees and volunteers or community support. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do. We'll put it under, um, we'll put it as 8D. Since it's rail trail committee related. Okay. Any other adjustments or additions? Not sure. We should bring it up under issues and concerns or additions. Uh, there has been a request from the village uh, if the town is interested in setting the coal raise for this year. Uh, so we can either discuss it under issues and concerns or we you know, let's add an item. Let's add it. It's a new item. Yeah, it's so way four, down there, it doesn't matter. 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions or concerns on invoices or orders? Uh, I had a couple that I asked for real time previously. Uh, I will check in with Jason, but, uh, the stipend for safety, uh, is under Johnson Hardware and Rental invoice number eight zero or eight two eight zero zero. Mm -hmm. Um, the safety equipment's needed boots and whatever um but the boot allowance specifically is supposed to be a reimbursement not charged to the town's accounts it's the same amount of money either way uh, but that was part of the union agreement everybody's copacetic it's fine it's okay not i think what it, was in the contract i mean personally i'm okay with it but we should just go back and say that to your point about all things contract just inform whoever it was or inform Jason to let whoever know. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that then. So, Carl, do you want to follow up with Jason on that? Okay. Cool. Do you have the, the sign you need on bag? Yes, I do have a call on the desk. Okay. Anything else you saw, Evan? Any other questions? No. And the stone and plant mix from Percy's all aligns with our previous approvals. I assume. Yeah, I'm assuming we'll get more invoices for that. Our next meeting as well. Okay. Um, review and approve minutes from June fifth. And special meeting June 14th. I'm going to motion to approve the minutes from June 5th as presented. June 5th as presented. So second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Um, we, so we have special meeting and a joint meeting also from June 14th. Yeah, uh -uh. Yeah, we sorry. don't have the joint minutes right, and sorry. the special meeting on the 14th. I was not the one that made the motion to of the finding for executive session or the motion for executive session. That's true. Duncan made the motion on the findings and Shane made the motion on the executive session. Okay. So, so I think that copy didn't need to do another motion. It needs to do the same thing. It's usually Evan that makes those motions because he knows all the fancy words. 
Okay, so Duncan made the first one and Shane made the second one. And do you remember who said it? I know, the Mark seconded both. Okay. Okay, so do we want to move to approve this time, or do we want to wait? Uh, we could motion to approve with the amendments. Second. Okay, you clear on that, Donna? Yep. All right. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Next day, we that. Oh, thanks. I would say it's nice to be back, but <laughs> it's not. <laughs> How many ticks did you get down there? Zero, exactly. I get more at my house than I get down there, I think. Um, select board issues and concerns. Are there any? None? Shocking. Okay. Shane looks like he's deep in thought. Yeah, come on, Shane. I will say, I think um, at some point soon, it might move us to have a conversation about setting up a cannabis control commission, a local cannabis control commission. Um, we are the board. Yes. But you want a commission specifically? A lot of communities have decided to create a commission uh, to handle those issues. And it's something we could look at. Uh, you know, okay. how we set that commission up is. Yeah, up to us, but okay. We've had several calls last week regarding inside of the window at one of the buildings. And I've had several calls concerning its location. Me too. Okay. I'm glad we all have phones that are connected with service. I'm sure we've all got the same calls. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like now? So no, I'm not surprised actually. Okay. So um okay. Commission for a later date. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh treasurer's report. Rosemary, you've got the floor. Okay. Uh, budget status report. To date, we are, are at 79% spent. And the big thing I'm waiting for is I haven't received the paving bill yet, which I'm assuming will be $700,000. And we're making great jobs of interest off our investment in capital? More than we were. A lot more than we were. Yes. <laughs> You're gonna get asked that all the time, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get in every couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh revenue hasn't really moved much, has it, since the last time we talked about it? No. Um we're probably gonna have a shortfall on clerks office fees. Um sales of property have dropped considerably and people are not refinancing. Okay. That doesn't look that short. Well, it's gonna be Two or three thousand dollars, probably short. Okay. So we're really short on other revenue. On what revenue? Other revenue. Because we didn't pull any money out of the bridge and culvert reserve fund. Or the building equipment reserve fund. Okay. Or the revenue but that's because fund is that for that's the uh, highway paving. equipment fund and that oh that's but right. I have to wait till all the loan payments are done. Okay. I mean we've bought a lot of culverts and we haven't pulled anything out of that fund. We could if we needed to. I was just looking at percentages and the ones that were really far off under revenue. I hear you. But really same like statement. Uh, yeah. Don't think we have the need at this point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you have that sense of how um, 
how our real estate sales are showing versus appraisal. Do you think our common level of appraisal is just going bonkers? Not to the good. Right, right. right in the, the sales that, that are happening are, are over Way our late. appraisal. Way late. Late. That's That's going to be fun. And cheap. That's your favorite thing. <laughs> nothing is not, nothing. Okay, any other questions on the GL? Okay. Okay. Delinquent taxes were at 98.4% collected. That leaves 1.6% percent uncollected for a total tax of 88,000 that's uncollected at this point. And there's got a listing of taxpayers there. And that doesn't include anything that came in today or it does? It does not because uh, the banks mm -hmm. are the post office and banks are right. closed so we couldn't yeah. we didn't do a no that's good. Take. I think there's I looked there's about 6,000 in the liquid taxes for you. Cool. That's going to be honest. With and when Susan was cleaning off Ryan's desk, uh -uh. we found the fire contract, which I'm pretty sure you guys approved. It's We don't have a signed copy. We don't have a signed copy. They should, though. They don't. Okay. So I just want to confirm the date we signed, and I'll just put their date. Okay. Sure. But okay. I'm gonna put this here actually. And I'm gonna to have to have a, a date to set a tax abatement hearing. Um Carl and I were talking about that. What did we talk about, Carl? Letting Rosemary decide. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were we had discussed real briefly at trying to hit it before a select board meeting if it's possible. So are we looking at the July regular meeting? If it's possible, do you think it's going to be a very long abatement hearing? This one shouldn't be, but um, there was a house fire that may be looking for a tax abatement, which that shouldn't be long either. Yeah, that'll just be a little talking before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can do it at. You want to do it at 5 30? Or... Do you think we can do it in an hour? Oh, yeah. Why not? On game. We're talking the third or the I'm talking the 17th. 17th. Perfect. Okay, let's do it. Mark, is your schedule for that? Always. And there is a draft copy of the audit report in your packet. Okay. This is uh for some light reading. Should I have this read in about 10 minutes? <laughs> I'm not going to need a paper clip. I'm going to need like that. The management letter is probably the most important to you guys. Okay, well, we should add this to future meeting. A future meeting. Yep. Okay, cool. And that's all the right time. Thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Rosemary. Okay, let's see what is next. Um, public work by Jason. Good, how are you? So, monthly report from Jason. What's the scoop? Not used to that, huh? No, it's good for time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hang on, that's in the back of the packet for us. Yeah, right? let's let's put the let's put the brakes on. Can you get some clear? Trying to find it. Anybody have a packet page number? I have a book. Yeah. Uh, packet page seventeen. Seventeen. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
You're in a different you're Patrick than me. No. That, no, 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 no. no. Did you uh, find your copy, Jason, or do you need a copy? Yeah. Yeah. I was just testing you. You passed. <laughs> you just make sure you listen. <laughs> uh, no, we we're just talking about the budget report and how and about revenue versus expense. There's no issue. We were just figuring out money spent versus whether or not we need to pull in from reserve, but we shouldn't have to. Yeah, I remember really well. I don't know, I guess I should have came earlier. I was saying my first walk. No, you're good. You're good. So there was something else that you're that Carl's gonna follow up with you on. Forget what it is now. Okay. But okay. Uh so we finished the spring game project. Done and wrapped up with that. Um, everybody's happy. Everybody's yes, everybody, all the <laughs> Issues that were there, and the remedies that we came up with are solved. Everybody's problem there for them. And we had rain to test. And we had a lot of rain in the last few days. So I do have a question about the paving project. We can either go over later after your report or right now. Okay. And I have a man, let's take a breath. A quick, recommendation, a quick re recommendation on paving projects. Okay, let's talk paving for a minute. We'll pick it back up. Go ahead. Don what is yours, Evan? Uh, on River Road West, there's the one uh, apron. I'm not sure if you followed up like, like or not. That was, it was no charge for us. It was no charge for us. Okay. Yeah. My, my only thought is um, that I think we should post on Front Porch Forum a few days before the paving project starts, if you know that, because I know a couple of people on Sinclair Road were like, holy shit, they're paving the road. Or, you know, they were starting the process. I would have usually, but this year, as everybody knows, we didn't know we never come in. There's not the slide that they agreed to come. They yeah. actually did. So. Yeah. That's all. It's very minor, just to give people a little heads up. We got all the dish so long that we asked for the previous meeting for the land purchase that's all at the safety and everybody for the proposal we wanted to organize. That's what we have on that work. Um, we got the gravel, half all of them. There's ditching on plot road, and we've gone down the intersection of Fort Road to almost the town line. They're out of that way.
and there are these different sort of signage now that never had been in the past. Uh, you see the signs and where the corner is in the pit and the first aid station sign. And there needs to be a sign that tells anyone coming into the pit that the pit office is actually located at our shop. You're there in the pit. Um, so that all the signs is just uh, a little under a thousand dollars for everything. That's with anchors, the post. That was one expense on top of the board probably expense. Uh, we rent lots of porta potties. We maybe should be getting a discount, maybe. I don't know if it's possible. Uh, and get them all through a single source so we can have them all picked up at the same time. Yeah. And then one that give our porta potty. Yeah. 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 I wonder if we could, I wonder if somebody could give them a call and negotiate pricing because we have porta potties at Legion Field. We'll have them in the pit. We have them at Old Mill Park. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this. It's been my experience. The porta potty world is kind of divided up by areas. It'd be interesting to see if we can get competition. Sort of, so there's this. this. That's been my experience. Yeah, that was when I called because I called yet, you know, three or four folks, and some people don't even come this way, leave it as. Jurisdiction, they got it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's generous of you. Yeah. Okay. Still worth asking. Yeah, it is worth asking. Okay. okay. So as far as the end shot, there's a inspector coming on the wind um, he's available to go for a preliminary walk through that wind. Have at all for anything. They'll tell us what the recommendations are. Any uh, over the paperwork part, the safety officer used to be Brian. And I haven't heard back from their head person in all the end. They need a full time person to be here. Because there has to be somebody on, on the forms 2000 7. As the head safety compliance officer, it would always run the story. Why was it Brian? It can't be somebody who's who's working the site. I am. And then there was a head one for the town. They had a don't quote me on this, but I think uh, Duncan must have been here before that. Mm -hmm. you that and Barry? No. No, the um the highway or the public work superintendent was oh, okay. he was also one of the people who took the training so on yeah. but he he was the one that um M Shaw would contact and he was when they came to do the inspections i could do it and then put brian is the second i guess that's something forward forward there but ryan is the second yeah, there would have to be one. Happy to. Does Ryan have any training about French eyes? Okay. I think it's a, I think it's important that we have these ducks in a pile. Mm -hmm. So let's do let's do that. No, I'm more than soon as he comes, I'll have more information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Everybody's good with that with Jason and Ryan? Yeah. Cool. The signs that you want me to meet the last of this year, still will be part of the client. I hadn't placed the order for the road sign. That was your question. I was waiting for a sign. But I don't know. How does that relate to the timing of the inspection? Oh, that's a, it's just a preliminary walk through, so they can't find us. So. Um, is it going to hurt us to not have them after they come back? Yeah. After okay. they do the initial visit, I think I'd rather do it before the end of this year because I want to know if there's anything wrong with our placement or anything like that before they do the final. Personally. Um, 
<laughs> I know I'm under like on a lot of other plans it's a science that like we're right but we're not going to be out of the data for very so that will be okay. awesome. I think I'm fine with that. Me too. Well uh what else you got Jason? Uh, that was it in my report. I know that Carolyn Graham Bell had the very important stuff with the Bell. Uh, we have Noel here. Let's do it. Before we move into that, can I just uh, real quick with Jason? I just wanted to make sure you were aware on the 15th of July, the governor's going to be coming through on the rail trail. Um, and I just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and see if you could schedule mowing around that. Um, so that it is all nice and fresh for when it comes through. It's interesting to bring that up. We started mm -hmm. uh, and there was talk about, I talked about it and reached out to uh, Jackie uh, Casino. And lady that oversees it today, I haven't received an email back. I just can't get that paper. No. Nope. Uh, confirmation of when they so she emailed you, Kyle? We started last week with the training. So we got it from the shop to MSI Pivot. You have got a day and a half left that you can finish it. There was stock that they have more than two times themselves, but we can complete it. So she did send out an email today and said that uh, there will be a crew of two people, two pieces of equipment, following starting next week in this stretch. Perfect. I'll waste my time on it then. Cambridge to Hardwick, great. Okay. She emailed you? I mean, that's well, great. She, she, uh, in Minnesota. Yeah, she was answering a question that I had sent to her. And when she responded to that, she tacked on this additional information. Gotcha. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. So do you want to do the gravel pit or the ash tree emerald? Ash for mitigation. Look like the three bullets that are on the beach. Yep. Let's do gravel pit, then we'll do ash tree. Yep. Gravel pit as far as that Go ahead. You, you go ahead. That's painting to what I found out about first, right? Oh, it's just here as a bullet point under your report it says monthly report travel pit ash yes. on page 18 there's a whole bunch of information on it too so it's just about the m stuff just about the okay uh -oh. and we'll have more information at the july meeting about the about the possibility of contracting it so jason you have a lot there's a write-up here <clears throat> About uh, costs and screening and all of that. Some of the has been previous in the report. That's a cost thing. What uh, get cost per ton for over a three yard of uh, material versus up processing in the bed. And some of the report is from the previous one. We did some of the late work already. Some of it. Um, the for informational purposes mainly just to show what the cost of yeah material. Do you know where? Like, did you refresh the plant mix and what are saying numbers? Material wide spread of current rates, same as the old site. And what location? Uh, both locations in Notch and our purchases. So, which price is in this? This is our last meeting in June, isn't it? It's our last meeting in June, and basically. Overall, you're rec basically you're saying if we need to, for people who aren't looking at the packet, basically you're saying the cost of replacing the screen, which is 40 plus years old, is $150,000. The, 
the current value of our screen that we have that needs replacing is between 15 and 20,000. Um, we have a buyer if, if we are interested in selling, an interested buyer, and apparently NATOs have first right of refusal. And they, they did have, but it was NATO. The being sold, I found out the sentence site. Okay. Yes. Well, this was just mainly informational for all. Honestly, like the data side of it, we talk about the data, the number side of it quite often. But to your point about the crew <clears throat> and having maintenance on our roads happening during summer months, um, that's really valuable to hear your opinion on utilizing crew for summer road work as opposed to being in the pit. Um, so I'm, I appreciate that you put your opinion in here too. Yeah, that was we were in the pit before. There was five of us and the part time over 600 hours a year for the part time. Now, right as of now, we haven't used the part timers since last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do do more pitching other road projects with grants and stuff now than we were when we were in the pit previously. Yep. Did you find out where those prices were from or not? Like the, you know, winter sand at 968 yard. That's from an auction for sure. That's from an auction, Eden or Woka. And the plant mix was from an auction as well. Yeah. More discussion in July when we know more. Yes. Okay. Anything else on the pit? Any questions anyone has? Um, it raised a question that has nothing to do with the pit. But it has to do with public works. Okay. Well, I can go after the ash tree okay. discussion. Ash trees. Yeah, that. go ahead. Regarding the pit, mm -hmm. would it be Worthwhile to spend a little bit of money with needed to um, verify um, the understanding that that uh, the town cannot have a crusher in its pit. Mm -hmm. You mean uh, like a legal opinion? Yes, uh, like you found out that uh, that first right of refusal went away when NATO sold. Did they do that department went to? In my life, I did own a couple different things from previous, well, pit owner, I think now, and, and uh, previous owners of NATO's that uh, how it was in the acting permit, but I had an officer in the uh, Oh, you think it was not in an agreement for the next? That's what they, that's what one of them said. It wasn't the acting permit, but right? I didn't have time to pull it up and I got a lieutenant deal with soon to get that. So, would it be worthwhile to check on that? Would that affect your thinking? Yes. Um, I think it's good to know the facts. Yeah. It's good to know the facts. Uh, old timer. <laughs> um, is there ever actually an Act 250 permit? Because being a municipality less than five acres, it's more just a filing, it's not a permit. I think the crusher. Would have triggered a permit, but I don't think that there was one filed saying we couldn't have one. Well, they, they did. Yeah. They did not recognize that in the previous existence of So, yeah, that would be good to have. Hey, there's a bunch of speculation going and all its absence. Work for the town, so I think it would be great to have 
legal review. Yeah, whenever we hear one person say what we can or can't do, like, cool, thanks for that lead. Now we need to go verify it. Because, yeah. Could have been a handshake a few years ago. No, no. We're not allowed to use the term handshake anymore in this room. <laughs> just allowed. Uh, okay. Um, anything else on the pit? Okay. So we'll look. So the action is to dig up the Act 250 permit and see whether or not, if there's any restrictions there. Um, would that be the only place there would be restrictions? Or only could it be on the actual lien on the property? Well, then the deed, if there could have been something in the deed when the town yeah. acquired it from the water outside, my understanding is that the town acquired it from the person who owns land next to yeah. that pit and is in that same line of work. Yeah. And so it, it seemed reasonable to me that they, they might have put that kind of restriction in there to sort of limit the competition. But uh, it's something we're checking. We you know where the deeds are by. In the Act of 50 permits to the yeah. Okay. okay. Um, ash tree, uh, emerald ash borer mitigation. Jason, I just wanted to check in, see, you know, every year or so, every six months or so, we get updates from you, start of season, end of the season kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, just where are we at? Um, have you been taking trees down? You know, what's the scoop? Yeah, when we're doing this project. We were taking them down more. I told him I made it the other day to take some pictures when he did. Uh, and the ones I found out the other day that are bigger concentrating through are less likely to be infected right off than the ones that are by themselves that are with the one or two. So there's a few that we see that we a picture of and we found kind of let you know what he's coming for or excited about them. So they're bigger. Um, but yeah, we did down many of the cannons with the project, the ones that can't handle safe for you. But if you want to call them, we completed that project last year that are going to come out of our one. So we can spend the treatment of them, take care of them because uh, they work by the car and they don't have to go to the state and have to take a Yep. Okay. Well, anything to add, Noel? I was going to say, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, essentially, it's because of the border and the uh, impacts they have with Manifest the Place, they're all considered high degrees right now, especially in our area of public works. So, they seem to be doing a great job as they're getting there. They're taking out the ones that are at risk. Also, um, doesn't mean that they'll all get infected. We've had a couple that were like stop by, and you don't have to deal with them. Have we seen them in Johnson? I know they're in Lamoille County, yeah, but. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean they aren't already good. Right. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I do have one other question. Is Do you know of anything going out to Lamoille County residents, like any mailings or things like that through the state? Uh, <clears throat> mailings, I don't know about. Uh, there is a pretty active website on uh, the forestry program. Uh, it's not really directed, I would say, but uh, they definitely have a lot of initiatives. ETMA says it's one of the big websites. Uh, that's, I think they're actually a non-profit. It's something that I'm going to get. Uh, so we've already been definitely working with them. They've worked with them, and they can help actually initiate some of the uh, initial action before they get back. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that before. Yep. Is that Ash Tree inventory available on their site, or is it available on site? Oh, okay, there's a report on the town site. Okay. Which, cool. of course, was before we started acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the note of what we did the other day, we did go up and uh, look at the section of the plot road that was in question about the tree and the ones that are up there that we are going to take care of that are in the right of way. There's a dead maple that's outside of the right of way that's going to be in the building. Maybe if they had a good tree, then you got to have a Big 
hopefully this year we can talk about creating some kind of spot budget for the recruits for that engine boat. So game for that period that and when we have problem trees like I think we had down the down that are safe to be cut or push with the equipment because they're so unstable it's Okay. Cool. That makes me think we should probably create a draft budget just to put notes like this in right now. Okay. Um, sounds good. Anything else that anyone has? Oh yeah, Evan has a question. This is more of a board decision. Uh, back when we were in the budgeting process, there was interest from the board to have uh, all committees and the pit on uh, Public Works guys' timesheets, just so if you gotta go to a culvert, for the historic society or to work at the skate park or are spending, you know, 650 man hours in the pit, it could actually be tracked being that fiscal year is turning over in two weeks or still interested in having that done so it could be tracked or not. There's no limitations on, you know, what it is per topic, but just being able to tell the taxpayers where the time's being spent. I would in love to make sure for past changed up a little bit. We added some stuff like that for print work, but to be able to track a little better. Just to not it's not for any real purpose, just to you know show at the end of the fiscal year we we spent as much time as we at work for this much time on it. I just don't want to create more paperwork than you know. Well, I know we love paperwork. You assigned them here. Hey, they, yeah. they fill out, they still fill a timesheet. Either way, it's just having a line so of timesheet for the paper works. Why is it in? Not only for paperwork, really, I'm trying to get the offer their job. Maybe that would be what I did before. So you're actually going out paperwork. Paper? Paper? Mm -hmm. Paper paperwork. I mean, it's not digital paperwork. Yeah, it should be digital paperwork. The fact that we have paper paperwork kills me. Back to we're calling it paper paperwork now, right? It brings me some joy. Oh, it pains me a lot. Ah, so currently everything's coded to summer road or winter road. You want to pick something out that's pretty hard. Yeah. So if there's forty hours spent in the pit. We don't really know. Nope. Okay. So we're um, another new agenda item. We need to talk about. So okay, we need to talk about how to do this in a way that makes sense. Yeah. It isn't in his electric out of control. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. know. It's it's probably a more expensive option, but well, it doesn't have. Really it doesn't have to be expensive. Okay, um, so we'll follow up discussion on this one, and I'll do a little thinking and digging. That's a fine sheet, right? Right, it's just lines, mm -hmm. hours are written. Uh, yep, okay. Okay, um, so we'll ignore Evan <laughs> and move on. Plan purchases. So we're not going to have it done by July 1, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's not going to be done. It's not going to anyway. It's, it's June 19th. Well, right, but if we <laughs> yeah. just if we just said ask for a line to be added for each committee and the pit, yeah, that's what you want. But like, what is every what's useful for everyone? Yeah, this at is the, end the, of the discussion day? that we had back in budgeting time, and the whole board was supportive of the idea. That's why I asked. Okay, okay. Next step is review plan purchases. We'll we'll pick it up again. Motion to approve no plan purchases. Perfect. Okay. There's nothing has changed. Nope. Okay. Uh, communities and volunteers appointments. Uh, library board of trustees appointment. We have an email from Sabrina recommending Crystal Woodward.
Anyone want to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint Crystal Woodward to be making a trustee seat collaborator. You have a motion to have a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, uh, discussion. Our discussion. Um, one, I'm going to abstain. Two, does that create any concern about me being a liaison to the wife? Based on that, maybe we did. She is my relative. Mm -hmm. Same um, last name? Woodward. Oh, she's probably not. Huh. Based on the email, I think that the library would. I mean, the library. The library um, I do, do have correspondence from the library yes. recommending that Mark not be the liaison if he has a relative on their trustees. I'm going to abstain. Whatever. Cool. Which would mean we need a new liaison? I'm hesitant to pick anything else up right now. How many library board of trustee meetings do you go to? That's a lot. Since they came here. And said they were going to include me in all their emails. They haven't included me in it. Yes. Oh, so you don't feel like a. I and I I toured and the bail form liaison. Yeah, I toured the bail with them. Yeah. Um, if the library is okay with uh, email communication, I'm more than happy to serve in that capacity if the board wants me to. Making more meetings is difficult. But if they're looking for an open channel to communicate with the select board, I do believe last time they were here, I said that they could just email the whole select board. But if they want to funnel emails through me, I can head forward. Uh, let's follow up on this one afterward because I'd like to know actually what they what like the request of a liaison is specifically because that might change the way we think about this. Um, so are we let's get some clarity on that. Are we appointing Crystal? Because there's a motion in a second. Figure. There is a motion in a second, so we have to vote on it either way. Um, everybody ready to vote? We don't have to. Yes. You can vote however you'd like. My question is, do you want to take them both up later or just the liaison portion later? Well, we have a motion. I think the on the on table. Later. I, I, I right. first Good. You answered the question. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Uh, and Mark abstain. I vote aye. So, Crystal, congratulations. Um, uh, next up is the community oven. And so uh, Liz, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how, how to pronounce Liz's last name. Baratini. Okay, are you confident in that? That's, that's Does anyone know how to pronounce Liz, last, Liz's last name? <laughs> no, okay. Well, Let's do our to best. Point, Liz Baratini, as recommended by the Community Open Committee. Two of the Community Open. Two a second. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Um, okay. Rail Trail Committee, Bike Lane on Railroad Street. Okay. Yeah, that one. But hi, I'm Ali Kratz and I'm the chair of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Committee. Um, so one of the things we uh, were charged with was coming up with recommendations to the town uh, that would benefit uh, the town itself, the people who live here, and everybody who's coming through. Um, and one of the big things uh, that we would all benefit from is bringing people from the trail into town and also having that access to residents pretty directly onto the trail. Um, at this point, there is not a dedicated bike lane on Railroad Street. Um, we understand with the bridge that it could be a little tricky, 
but there are different grants available from the state, uh, different and from different organizations from municipalities to look at feasibility uh, and potential funding for construction. Um, and we would like to recommend to the town uh, that that be something that you know either we be green light to look forward, look into, or the town look into itself, depending on how the funding would be allocated. Um, Eva Rose, who runs the bike tours right up at the end of Railroad Street, uh, did some research for us uh, since that's her bread and butter. And uh, one of the big things she found when she was looking at the impact that these sorts of repurposed recreational trails have on communities was the ones that were able to most benefit economically were ones that early on established a direct, a dedicated bike lane from the trail into town. Um, you know, I'm sure pretty much everybody here has been up there and you know that, you know, on paper or for any of us walking around, it's not that far, you know, to get right down here to Maine. But if somebody's coming off the trail and you're looking down and you, there's no dedicated like bike lane, you can't really see the sidewalks, you just see this big old mill complex, people coming through, you know, going 40 miles per hour, there's not great visibility, people just keep going. Um, it's not necessarily inviting, but if there is some sort of dedicated bike lane that is like, oh, okay, we can go right into town, there you go. Um, and we think that that's something that the town should really consider. Um, sorry, I'm going to move this here. Uh, so far, all the other towns kind of along the rail trail, you do have some that intersect pretty directly with the rail trail or people can just right, kind of ride on, ride off but none of them really have that dedicated bike lane access. Um, and when we're, you know, I don't wanna sow discord here, but when you kind of think about it from the aspect of people riding along the rail trail, when they're kind of coming to this middle section, they're gonna be making decisions on where they're gonna stop. Are they gonna stop in Jeffersonville? Are they gonna stop in Morrisville? You know, are they gonna stop in Johnson? Those are people who are gonna make a choice in which community to stop in, and we would like them to stop in Johnson. Um, and a really good way of getting them off that trail you know, is to have that lane there because we do have a lot of things that are good for people biking off. We've got a we've got Sterling Market, we've got, you know, the coffee shop, we've got different places to get lunch and dinner, or pick something up, go back, or, you know, sit for a little bit. Um, and we think that that's going to be our first kind of big recommendation is let's move forward with trying to get some sort of dedicated bike infrastructure on Railroad Street. Um, and I think we want to talk about something. So the signage we were going to talk about later. Um, the sign, yeah, well, after bike lanes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're done with bike lanes. Then. You can jump right into the signage if you want. Yeah. So, one of the other kind of corollaries to that is we would like to also recommend uh, the town look into getting a cohesive signage uh, for the rail trail in Johnson. Uh, Hyde Park has that. If you look at a lot of different towns, they're coming up with cute ways of kind of marketing the town through the signage. Um, and coming up with a little bit of a brand. We are somewhat limited with the uh, right of way coming off of the rail trail, but as far as, and a lot of the signage through town and outside of that right of way, uh, we can get creative. Um, Adrian and Blake uh, have offered to uh, donate their time and services to create a design for us, uh, kind of get something that says Johnson and people you know, associate that with the rail trail as they're coming through. They're like, oh, there we go, right there. Um, they're gonna, they're willing to donate the time and services to take care of that for us. The design, we would need to find some sort of funding for the construction of the signs and the uh, installation once we're at that stage. Um, I but again, for the sign. yes, yeah, Adrian wants to come up. Oh yeah. And, and where can I, I like that. where can I see some of these existing signs so that I can go see what we're talking about? Is it hard, yeah, so Hardwick Mountain or someplace out in the in the packet? We have the, the, I know the image is kind of small, but yeah, um, that's the journey of what the current signage is mm -hmm. for, um, like for people that are coming off of Main Street, the Railroad Street down. Um, yeah, I just typed on that. I don't want to forget anything, so I'll just read from that. Um, so I'm on the Planning Commission, Beautification Committee, and Rail Trail Advisory Committee. Um, on my committees and commissions, I have heard a common issue that signage in Johnson needs to be updated with more 
consistency in appearance and be added to some areas. This is specifically important with the addition of the rail trail. Without proper signage, people that come off the rail trail will not know how to get to certain areas, and that can cause confusion, which in turn can cause frustration for visitors. Um, this would then influence if they would like to revisit the town of Johnson in the future or not. When looking at signage for the rail trail specifically, I noticed that it is somewhat confusing finding parking for the rail trail. If Johnson has parking for the trail, that can be a major draw for people that can park in Johnson, use the trail, return to their car, and then do activities in Johnson afterwards. In the images we sent over, I laid out the current journey for people trying to park uh, in Johnson to use the trail. The major things to point out are that there is a long stretch with no signage on Railroad Street, also, when you arrive to Len Wayne Lane, there is a sign that says no parking at any time with no arrows on it. In addition, there is no final sign at the end of their journey that states park here for rail trail. Um, I would also like to point out that some of these signs don't match each other in appearance, which makes it hard for the user to know if they correlate to each other or not. My personal recommendation is that we create new signage for everything in Johnson. That includes places like Beers Park, Legion Field, signage for the rail trail, etc. I think that all signs should live in a system together. They should all feel like Johnson. To achieve this, Johnson would need to update their branding, which means a new logo, website, and signage, all in a system together. If everything is created at different timelines with different designers or agencies, then we will not achieve the cohesion that we need to communicate with visitors and residents effectively. Once the system is created um, for the major areas, it will be easy to expand it into more niche areas as well. My partner Blake and I are both graphic designers and would love to donate our time to rebranding Jonathan and with that, the creation of a new logo, website, and signs. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Very cool. I mean, it seems to me that uniform signage, do you think uniform signage needs should be the whole length of the rail trail. Also, it would be nice if the signs were the same. Well, so the, the state same. is doing uniform signage in the right of way. Uh, so that's of the rail trail. Yeah, so that's part of what Adrian was getting at is in the right of way, there's really not anything that the town can do, but outside of that right of way, there's a lot that we can do. Yeah. I mean, and just the the this searching for parking thing that you put together is great because it's one of many ways in which, you know, it, it, you, you've made it very clear to us how we're failing in this. So uh, and, and sometimes other, it's helpful. You know? yeah. the, the other thing besides signage is I got to assume most people are looking for access on their cell phones and on the Internet. Yeah. And I think that's just so crucial that we have a strong presence there. That we are, that we have good park. I think we have relatively good parking. And you can think about Hyde Park and Morrisville and places. We have a pretty good parking in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so that it's a big, it's a big project to think about your our online presence. Because again, I my feeling is is that um, we want people coming to Johnson to use the rail trail as much as we want people using the rail trail to come to Johnson. I think it's a two-way thing that's super important. Um, the state has reached out and is in the process. They've already done an inventory and will be putting up their own signs in the state right-of-way. Um, Don't we have to approve that? We already... So my understanding is the state is putting signs along the rail trail and putting... There are brown directional signs on the state roads, and they offered to put one on Railroad Street that would match what they put on the state roads. And they've asked, they've offered to replace some blue signs that the town put up and replace them with the brown signs so that they match the other directional signs. Mm -hmm. That's the question that I have. Jason? Uh, as far as signage, I don't 
the matter either way. But one thing I would ask for the public works firm is we can take a sign that's easily available because some of the signs that were put up. What do you mean easy and available? What does that mean? Easy to for availability because the sign makers that we just put two up last fall that for the parking lot's by the road trail, we were four hundred and some odd dollars with the post, but easy to use because a lot of them get vandalized. Uh, meaning easy to replace. Yeah, easy to replace. I uh, see. Not uh, cheap, but yeah, yeah, that would be nice. And some of the you know, I wouldn't be opposed to having them set standard this way. It's easier to manufacture. But we're trying to match two or three different things. And we're trying to get signs made. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, have you? And I know there's a lot of you from the Johnson Rail Trail Committee. Um, have you talked to the the regional, the Lamoille Valley through the LCPC? I forget what it's called. Uh, Doug has. Are they doing anything on the on the signage front? The um, there, there is uh, quite a bit of activity going on with the um, action, but it's a very disjointed action. Um, if you've seen the management thing, it, it's kind of like a, a train. Um, and, and it's, uh, they, there's a clear idea that, that an emphasis that things be uniform. So you'd say, this is the rail trip and, and things like that. Uh, we're, there's actually going to be, uh, we need to know what they want and we need to cooperate. But we have a lot of assets that we want to direct people to that might not be. Um, and we, the uh, committee has been going over a list of all the businesses that we have, what, what we don't have, what we should have, pondering how in the world we can, can get some of the ones we don't have. But the, the, we, we're going to need signs for that. You know, you're going to need signs to direct people to, uh, if they're here, to direct people to things like the Arboretum. To uh, uh, journeys in uh, the various circle tours, the gravel bike things, you know, the different assets that, that we have. So signage is being worked out. They know it's important, uh, but I will tell you that we're going to have to do a lot of it ourselves because what you really are going to have is competition between various communities on the trail with regard to uh, the people and, and the economic benefits and and. Uh, I was so impressed with Eva Rose's uh, considerable research that that, that, that was mentioned. Uh, she checked out uh, rail trails in Canada because they've been around longer, and uh, and and the, the, the emphasis, as as was 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 pointed out, is that the access, the most important problem, most important thing that you have is not what you have downtown; it's how safe people believe the access is. And that that proves out short term and long term for your communities. Uh, I, I, if I can jump back to the uh, to, to the question of, of uh, public access, I spoke with Kate Lally, who is a landscape architect, and some of you might have, and she's familiar with communities that have problems like ours with with railroad streets. Uh, and and she said, oh, there is this community. She, she was willing to talk about that. So, you know, uh, I view our job as telling you that this is really important and how do you find a way to solve it? And, and I know that there's long-term solutions and short-term, and I think Kyle has some suggestions for short-term. I'm sorry, I wanted to. Can I just ask a question about this? Getting back, okay, so Kate about the roads got it, but still about the signs there are different categories of signage we're talking about. And I guess that I just wanna make sure that we're being clear. Like, I really like the idea of having the consistent parking with the arrow and the rail trail sign. But the th my only concern is that the rail trail sign is a sign that is being produced by the state right now on, me on state roads. And we're trying to bring them up our local roads as far as possible. How does that play into this design work, and what other sign options are you suggesting in I this proposal? A, I really think that's a work in progress. We're, okay, we want to, you know, 
have a recognizable sign that, that people say that's related to the rail set. But the, the you know, they have a 490 page uh, manifesto or uh, a design uh, document. Yeah, I can well, imagine. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and I have, I have not seen anything, you know, we know, well, this is your jurisdiction, but we want to cooperate. There's a benefit to cooperating. So we're going to have to figure out where, where we go our own way and, and, and what the benefits are, you know, if are the benefits enough to do that, you know. But, you know, it's predictable that we will have to do some of that. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm still ask, wondering what the ask is for signs. At right now, what is the ask for signs tonight? The ask is for the town to take the research, or is it the ask is for either the town to take the research or somebody in the community to take the research? Am I, I correct? I think that will be developed at the regional level. You know, when your representative Kyle is in the and uh, we're we're going forward. We, it's a huge thing, and we have an hour meeting. You know, it's embarrassing. You know, for, for tomorrow. Okay. So I'm telling you, the information is not for you. Okay. Yeah, I guess a couple of things. Uh, what would we ask? Would the town like Adrian uh, and like to take on? You know, kind of developing a bit of branding, even if we don't know at this point that we're going to go full scale and. A whole campaign. Do we want them to start looking at that? Um, and does the town want us to continue looking into all the signs and options and obviously we're going to come together? You know, this is you know new information to us. That the side, we could get some of the signage from the state to go up railroad street. Um, that's something for us to consider when we're thinking about the signage and also you know to potentially bring it to design concept. And I think there's like two things at play here. There's like directional language where we don't really have like the kind of influence on it's just like right needs to follow the guidelines and then we have more like nice signs that point out places that we want people to go and like more of like advertising like, for sure um, i got you more, like, I okay and you're so okay perfect that's helpful thank you so you're really just talking about the how to draw people in and not the directional signage. I think okay. to do both, but yeah, like I think my goal is more on the design for the I gotcha. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, I think we do need it. I think we need to, if we're going to draw people in, I think we actually need to replace our town logo too. Um, but that's not part of what I'm saying around design. Mostly what I'm saying around design is for the signage side of it. I would like to see options for signage. I would like to see something clean and simple and attractive. Uh, I have a beholder, I know. <laughs> but um, anyway, well, how do others feel? Supportive in concept. I, it spun from uh, rail trail specific signs to, to signs for the whole town. This is for rail trail specific. This has to be the fo our scope is rail trail specific so at this definitely point. Definitely not talking about pretty signs that need a design. Then no, rail trail specific is parking. No, rail trail specific is drawing people off the rail trail. It's not about directional signage. It's I understand correctly. What Adrian was getting at is that maybe for some of the local attractions, we have more you know creative and attractive signs, and then for the you can go park at the rail trail, we have more utilitarian to use how those words signs. So, that, so it's a broader spectrum than just the rail trail, right? Because we would want to capture people off of Route 15 that don't necessarily use the rail trail to go to the Arboretum. It would also serve that purpose, yes. Um, in support of the idea, signage and standardizing signs through whole town seems like much more of a monumental task in my mind. Um, signage could definitely be improved. The welcome signs, we could use a nice sign at Old Mill Park, Legion Field, the views we doing. Arboretum is a great point. Historic Society. I don't know if I'm at the point of rebranding. Um, I would be supportive of a look at the signs that were needed to get an idea of cost before I would ask personally, snuff board speaking, for design concepts. Um, my guess would be 30,000, 35,000 ish. Um, I could be off. Maybe I'm low, maybe I'm high, but we obviously would have to come up with a way to fund that before we have design concepts and balls rolling in my mind. And that could be funded through if the taxpayers want to use year end surplus, or maybe we add it in the budget, the rail trail committee to have a budget. Um, so I think it's important, but I'm not at the rebranding stage myself wholeheartedly. I love the idea of getting rid of our website. So we have only been talking about that for- It's gonna happen. We've been on the board for three years. So we've been talking about it's it It's gonna happen years. this year. As long as the town pays for all of it. Okay, so you're open to seeing design concepts is what I'm hearing you say. No, I said I was open to an inventory of the signs that were needed and getting a ballpark price before I saw designs. We could see designs today and say, yeah, we want to do it. Uh, how are we going to pay for it? We could use ARPA money. That's an option. But I'd like to know about what we're talking. I think my first step is the inventory I need to is figuring out what we need for signage and then going from there. Hold on a second, Jason. I, it seems to me that we have people that are willing volunteering to show us the lines. They show us three designs. They're doing all the legwork of, of finding out where they think they should be. Um, then we, then we, I mean, you can't get prices until you know what the design is. I mean, if it's just a green sign with lettering, we can That's say yes or no. But if it's more fancy, I mean, it seems to me. What you want is to know the cost before you know what you're getting. I said ballpark costs, and you could very easily talk to a sign company that we buy signs from and get a ballpark. It might be way out to lunch. Yeah. Are you working? Say, Can I just ask a question? 
Are you working on inventory? Are you, like, is that part of your discussion, Allie? Oh, yeah, and then we have inventory of you know, needs and wants and things like that. And I think, you know, we do have some kind of inventory and we can get more of that as well. Okay. Like, uh, so I just an inventory of what signs and where. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are we talking about in terms of what signs and where? Yeah. For the non directional, like, forget yeah. the directional, just the. I'd like the directional signs maybe to be a, another sheet if we could have an idea, but. But the state's going to pay for that. Well, not all. I don't know that we know exactly what they're paying for and not yet. I know, I know they're doing things within the right of way, but then there are things like the railroad street that they're coming out and saying they're willing to pay for. It might be that there are other things they're willing to pay for. I, again, one of the five, I personally would say having the full inventory would be nice. And then, like I said, we can cross things off the list as we say this is going to be paid for by this group, you know. Here's the thing. I feel like we're being unrealistic in asking a volunteer to committee to come up with an inventory of signs that somebody other than the volunteer invent the volunteer group is responsible for. They're not responsible for the signs that the state asks if we want them to put up. So I just worry that we're creating a situation that is one of frustration for a large group of volunteers once again. So if we want to go down the full sign inventory, that's cool. But I think we need to provide the foundation of that saying, here's what we know about directional signs. Like that's our responsibility to help feed them. What I know is that inside the state right of way, we, you don't, we wouldn't need any inventory of signs within that. Um, when it comes to, you know, like we said, the railroad street or any other existing signage uh, that is going to be replaced by the state, we wouldn't need any of that. Um, well, I think, I, you know, having been to their meetings, I've heard a couple of ideas, and, and we've heard at this meeting, ideas about needs. Um, and I think it, I don't think it would be that difficult for, I mean, it wouldn't be that difficult for any of us, but it definitely wouldn't be difficult for the people who are regularly using the trail to say, hey, here's a sign I saw when I was in Cambridge. We could do that in Johnson. Um, I, I don't think it's as, and I guess I can ask the committee if they feel, I don't know if it's that exhaustive of a task uh, to kind of list these, these things out. And I also, I don't think it needs to be a totally exhaustive list. You know, if you miss some things, it's not going to be the end of the world. Do something quick. I'm going to go to Jason if you want. Jason? I think the only thing I was going to say is that I think you'd have to let them define it and know what materials the sign that we made out of for an anchor, anchor pulled from the sign company. Yeah. So you've got to know what's on your flat paper or some of the most thicker sheet on it. I would put in them for families in the winter that we have to put down. And then okay, three posts or one post because that all is going to add to the cost. So I think you have to let them define it so it's being anchored across what it's going to Thanks, Jason, for that. Doug? Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Got it. Yeah. Doug? I think that a lot of this, if you had your economic development here, uh, when you look at the, uh, Thanks, Doug, for rubbing the salt. <laughs> it seems like there are many people with many ideas here that, uh, such as, uh, they talked about the, uh, some towns having, uh, see, which, uh, um, they're talking about having uh, a better connections program, you know, things like that. I, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, I wouldn't go right to the default like this is going to be taxpayer money. I go to the default like I mean, there's probably money on this because there's a, a big emphasis, you know. Carl, uh, and I spoke to you on the phone, I'm going to hold it. Um, uh, and, you know, we know the governor's coming. One of the reasons we want him to stop here is we want him to be conservatively uh, impressed with what we have. We had cited you know, help later. You know, if there's money out there. You know, I don't think that's often like it's taxpayer money yet. So we'll all make our cardboard signs and put it out for his trip through. Why not? Right? And the signs will be, we hope we get money for signage. You know, <laughs> we, have, we have proposals and we think it will be helpful. Yeah. Okay. No. 
a uh, couple comments. Uh, when you search about the rail, you get four hits. One of them is Mobile Valley Bike Tours. Another one is the Johnson Rail Trail Railhead. And the third one is the Mill Park Railhead. So there are hits for Johnson Rail Trail, but they're all literally on the trail. So and that, and that is Google, Google Maps. Maps. Now, Google Maps, I yeah. get it. Well, if you're looking at a trail for map for the bike tour, you would be using the yeah. app. That's yeah. why the search engine is there. Uh, my next comment is that the Arboretum has a point in Google Maps, and I manage it, and we've had over like, up to 90,000 hits in this day Arboretum. Um, all I would have to do is probably add in the description, easily accessible by from the rail trail by whatever feed, right? And it might come up in that search. In so the comment is if you want people to show up in that search, have them place their businesses. Put, put a pin in Google and say, I think that is a great thing. Actually, the search engine optimization yeah. effort is a great thing for the committee to help. Like you could help spread the word on that. If you don't mind taking something like that away. Uh, it is really easy. Like Noel's saying, you literally just have to establish, establish yourself and then have people like me who take pictures and post them on things like that. I have like, I don't know, half a million views of my photos just from places I've traveled. Um, but like people see them is the point. Anyone can put it out there. So we should all just be Google aficionados. And, oh, and really think about maybe people biking down the rail trail would like to know about beard swimming. You know, if they're hot and sweating. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like it all. Yeah. Okay. Um, bike lane. I just want to circle back to bike lane. Um, what are thoughts on bike lane? Uh, Jason, do you have thoughts on bike lane? Bike lane? Um, where does bike lane go? Getting up between beach from the sidewalk to the road and then that three foot tread. The road itself going to be three foot wide. The green tread is three feet and sidewalk is five. I like an elevated one myself. When you think about there was some discussion. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. When you think about the valley, we're one of the few towns. I mean, if you're in Hyde Park and you're pedaling along the rail trail and you look left, going straight uphill, you keep pedaling. You know, we are in with Cambridge and in Jeffersonville, there's quite some access that you have, have to negotiate where it's here, we're a straight almost downhill shot into the road, which is a real benefit. I think we're I think we're really in a good place for people to come. Um, somebody was talking about the Spiritual High Library. Is that you, Mark? Maybe it was Duncan, actually. Um, yeah. Duncan is unfortunately not here tonight, but he had brought up just in passing at one of our meetings that is there any way to get people off Railroad Street um, and follow the river? Well, that's what I think for I'm asking to look into some of the money that, that's available to our feasibility studies and that sort of thing. So, you know, we know that there's definitely limitations with Railroad Street as is, mm -hmm. um, but you know, just kind of get a great link to go ahead and see what other options there might be. Do you know of a grant that we could look into for feasibility studies? Uh, Tim Tierney from DED mm -hmm. told us about it at the uh, uh, Better Connections grant was the one that um, I think it was a B Trans grant um, that I think he had mentioned was specifically used in other communities to build bike lanes. Um, that is one option. Mm -hmm. I, I think, as they were saying, we could use that for the initial is this feasible work and then go from there. Um, no matter what, I think, you know, if, if we do explore this on rail, our railroad street is cooperating with the village in order to do it. Um, so before we move forward at all, you know, we have to see whether they would be on board with it. Um, 
for the feasibility study we would have to okay um unless we're finding some way to get off of railroad street if we're talking about a bike lane on railroad street i don't see any way we do it without getting rid of that green strip and yep okay suggestions on moving forward on this one So we don't have an economic developer, Doug, as I'm sure you <laughs> sure you know. So uh, your our economic development people are here. Did you apply? Here we are. <laughs> I mean, there are ways that the village would not need to be a stakeholder, but it wouldn't be going down their road street. No, it would be. Coming off Old Mill Park, if the town ends up with Holmes Meadow across the Lamoil River, adding a bridge, well, we might need to add a bridge anyways, because railroad street bridges. Um, so there are communities that have lanes on narrow strips. End of statement. <laughs> uh, Three strip. We're trying to condense file to pitch an idea. What we wanted to do is motivate you to look into it. You know, it's not a it's not a tomorrow thing, but, mm -hmm. but it's important. Um, and um, Kyle has been talking to him, to people about. Well, obviously, this is a very long term plan. It's the it's the pipeline which could take years, mm -hmm. well, not decades, but years. So that's the long-term goal. The short-term goal is, okay, how to capture um, folks now or soon to come up um, the trail and go down the railroad street. So the beautification committee has been putting our heads together about ways that we could use flowers, perhaps, or beautification as a way to drop people off and, um, and into the village. So we've had preliminary talks with um, the Tatros and the Old Park Concerns property about creating a, uh, we're just calling it Follow the Yellow Brick Road. It's creating um, a, uh, a strip of continuous, um, not the mammoth ones, but the shorter um, uh, sunflowers to go all the way down mm -hmm. into, the, into the village. So people see these sunflowers, they want to follow them, the Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> All the way into the village. So that's something that we're talking about with the Tatros. We haven't been able to make our schedule meet yet, but in concept, they're very open to that idea of starting at their the old trust building there mm -hmm. and wrapping down, and then at least going to the Railroad Street Bridge. And then from there, we'll need other, other you know, uh, permissions from the village and whatnot, but at least starting with that. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting idea. Sounds pretty. Sounds great. Very cool. Um, okay, I think that you've piqued our attend, our piqued our interest, Doug. To your point of not needing needing a decision now, but can we do something about it? Are you going to say something, Shane? I was just going to point out that um, there's another grant that uh, Kyle um, forwarded from Eric, um, the Rail Trail Community Connectivity Grants, which was included in the year's transportation budget. So in addition to better connection, there are other state money that can be used for this. Yeah, okay. Some people can call houses on. Um, okay. Is this the type of thing that in the meantime, while we're waiting on an economic development person, would it be worth reaching out to LCPC and seeing whether they could take something like this on the, the initial feasibility work? Do you want to follow up on it? I could certainly. Yeah. Uh, are we all good with Shane following up on it? More information is never bad. I'm good with it too. More that would be great. Better. Awesome. Don't Thanks, Shane. Okay. So Shane will do a little bit of digging and work with LCPC a little bit. Um, is there anything else that we've, oh, July 15th. Let's move on to July 15th. 
Can somebody? Okay, go. Um, I would say that the page 27. Historian, the talent historian on, on this subject, uh, you're about to, uh, on July 15th, uh, and I think it was, did I understand that you communicated with the governor's office? Or, or well, anyway, you, you received the, with Jackie uh, the governor Casino. said, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, the governor, the go Jackie said the governor's office is going to talk to them, uh, and they're going to make a, uh, a, a water stop here. What we would like to do, and this is this is uh, Casey's idea, is that we would like to take and offer him a photo op at our Trump boy to be a to be one of the people in the picture. We would uh, uh, there is a conductor cap hat. We uh, Casey has come up with the idea. We'll call him conductor in chief, and we would like to ask the select board to. Approved giving him a certificate and nominating him, you know, with this honor. And Eric can speak about how we've done that in the past with Governor Douglas. Uh, and uh, maybe help you for the clock have, winding. Yeah, the clock one. Mm -hmm. For the official conductor for a day. Yeah. yeah. Were, you, were you up there? It's the, the official conductor yeah. for the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and, and then, then there's some idea for plans for. You know, ice cream. We, we try to make something out of it. You know, yeah. ice cream or, or sodas or, or something. But and get people there. There's there's an uh, opportunity for people to ride with the government you know, from wherever you want to want. But but that's uh, we the main thing is photo op and for us and and a uh, give him a certificate. You know, with some official status. I like it as long as the frame says Johnson. Yes. <laughs> and we give him a framed photo of himself. Yes. Yes, there's going to be a general type of event in the stock going on. And um, Johnson Works has offered to help with that, and I'm sure other people will also. Okay. But now that we've heard the magic words that new, you know, he, he, and he will stop. It's at noon. Okay, we have heard yeah, noon. I, yeah. I, I said I, that news just came in this afternoon, so we turned the online. That's a pretty cheap. So, but about the photo op, I mean, the dream is to have him, you know, willing to get off his bike and get into the train and be part of that interactive tableau of mix of history and people. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the the next be part of the allure of that whole design anyway is to have you know the hotel visitors kind of get it and see what they can do needs instruction needs signage you know about that do, doing that to the advantage of that photo op um but for the moment all we hear about is getting the government in the seat and you know getting this picture there and hopefully we, we can do that. Cool. Okay. Do you need anything from the board? We need a, a motion in for a certificate and uh, uh and for certificate paper. of the okay. Yeah, you need a motion for the paper too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. What do you mean? You know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, you were the paper paper guy, weren't you? Yes, I was. I just want to spend that. All right. Okay. Do we have All a motion right, for the doctor of the day? Yeah. Let's hear it. Come on, spit it out. I make a motion that the select board um, approve the creation of a certificate of, for conductor of the day for Governor Phil Scott on July 15th. And then we, um, Rosemary, that's something we have in the office. I assume something. Like Eric's that. always done the certificate. Eric's always done it. <laughs> I'm sure Eric has got something like that. Somebody would. More computer savvy than me. No. You literally just need to buy paper. Don't worry about the paper part, just the approving. Yes, it. yes. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to do a second. I'll second that. Mark. Any uh, discussion? All, all right. those in favor? Sorry, I just wanted to ask um, is there any thought to the other components of the event? Um, whether that's going to cost any money? Do we? Can we just do the conductor part first, then you can ask? Sure. Okay. All those in favor? 
Aye. Ayes have it. Just because I don't want to forget there's a motion on the table. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to ask if there was any thought as to, you, know, you mentioned ice cream, I know water, um, paying for those things, paying for a framed uh, conductor certificate. What about um, some pizza for the community oven? You know, I love the idea, Evan, if you're volunteering to cook it. Yeah, um, if there was somebody from the Historic Society there, that would be nice, too. Our next meeting is a short one and we're not adding, we're not looking to add agenda items. It's July 3rd. Oh, I think so. we can get the donations. Yeah, donations would be lovely. And I think you'll probably get people contributing yeah. 10 or 15 bucks too, if you need it. Um, we'll spend money in other ways, but I feel like this one will be easy to get donations for. Yeah. I, I do hear that previous select board members are loaded with cash and love making donations to committees. <laughs> Uh, well you're you're there's three of you in a row so you're right <laughs> okay um anything else that we anything else for a rail trail there was another uh Lamar valley rail trail okay the signing the document so we had voted for doug and kyle did that term end already? Is that what happened? Or did we just not sign a form? I believe that they think that their term is expiring. <laughs> I think that they owe my eyes when, when the bureaucracy in Morrisville told me when I that we had been appointed out uh, and I really give them to me for the paper appointment, you know, and they said you have to have this form. Okay. A good job. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Okay, got it. Okay. Consider it done. That the select board can decide if you're going to appoint them to one, two, or three year terms. Oh, that's oh. all three. Three years sounds good to me. Four years? <laughs> Is there a little note section? Do you, are you vehemently opposed to a three year term? You can, that's true. Okay. Uh thank you. Um I authorize them to share some form, right? Yep. Perfect. Yep. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Guys have it. Thank you very much. Apparently we need two witnesses in the bureaucracy of the forum too. So if anyone would like to sign. Rosemary is a good witness. Right. He's a notary. So, I mean, she can't witness. I know. Oh, wait. Did I, you broke did I send the wrong thing? You broke it. Okay. Sorry. That was something. Okay. Um, next up is thank you, Rail Trail Committee members. I think we're at the end of the Rail Trail Committee discussion. And thank you, um, signage volunteer. Thank you. Very cool. Okay. Uh, next up is sculptures along Main Street. No, then we have to accept the state offer to replace the Blue Rail Trail directional signs. Are we not doing that? Are you uh, a uh, good point. I thought we had already done that. I'm confused by that. I don't think we have. Okay. 
Was this a real, was this a committee? It was not a committee, I announced. Okay, sorry committee, but we have more and half of you left. Um, there is a item about accepting the state offer to replace all of the blue rail trail directional signs with the state brown directional signs. Do you guys have a general idea what the rest of the committee would support? They're consistent with the rest of the signs that'll be around the state, yeah. from what I understand. So thumbs up. I did that this morning. I have a meeting tomorrow. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just make sure I'm not signing in the wrong place. So can we get a motion to go ahead? Make a motion to accept the state's offer to replace the rail trail directional signs. Bummer. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I actually wanted the motion to just be go ahead. Ayes have it. Motion and motion. All right. So I assume one copy is for us and one copy is for them. Correct? Mm -hmm. Two <laughs> okay. Well, we have. I'll have one for us too. There you go, Doug. You and Kyle need to fill it out and sign it too. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Next up is. Um, I would take one, Evan, if you don't mind, please. Next up is replacing sculptures on Main Street. Did you vote on the last uh, I'm sorry. Did you vote on the last? Question? Yep, we did. It passed unanimously. We want this rosemary a copy of this. Yes, um, let me actually write. Oh, you can write Kyle and Doug's names then. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Hang on, wait for it, wait for it. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Still oh, multiple papers? I know, I know. But there's no picture. No, I, I have pictures. I think they look good. Maybe you can pick more. I wish Duncan or Eric was here. Um, Eric just left you a chance. Um, Rosemary. Yeah. Just have to ask for my own clarity. Who owns the pedestals? Good question. I it was part of the Main Street project. Very cool. What? It was part of the Main Street project. I thought were both of us. Which was the village's project. The town only applied for the grant, correct? I thought the village. No, the village applied for it. All the money went to the village. Okay. I'm. Um, just, I just pinged Eric. I just texted him asked if he can come back. Okay. Um, hello. Hi. I'm uh, Mike Stanley. I'm a pretty new member of the Vermont community. I, my wife and I moved here a year and a half ago from Mississippi. I was a, I'm a sculptor and I was a associate professor of art and chair of the art department at Dallas State University. And I ran a sculpture garden. I helped run sculpture gardens with some great people. And uh, I've been talking to Kyle and noticed that there were some sculpture paths in Johnson. and I just wanted to, to talk to you all about the possibility of either putting some sculpture on there or starting a sculpture committee, or if there's any interest in putting a, a sculpture trail. I had a the sculpture garden that we ran was part of the university, but we extended it to the downtown area in a very sustainable way. Uh, it was the only sustainable part of the sculpture garden. It's not okay. And in 2021, we, were, we, were, we received a, a what was it called? For a, Outstanding Public Art Project Award in Mississippi uh, because of it. Um, I just did a couple of handouts about the value of public art. We don't have to go through that word for word, just something to think about. Um, but it dovetails nicely into what was just we talked about with the rail trail, um, getting people off the trail and into the town. Um, sculpture is very visible. Um, it's something that will typically lead people around if there was traditional. Yeah, they were able to do in Johnson, you know, it's just, just gives them more light than covered. Because, like you said, it is the spot off the rail trail, you know, it's right downtown. 
I would have you been through the Barry um, Trail system? Yes. And yeah. the sculptures in yeah. that. And, and they just, it, it brings a lot to the space. Oh, oh it really does. So. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm willing to donate a sculpture for one of the pads if we're able to, to, to do that. No, no cost there. And we've talked to a few other artists who feel the same way. There's is it four pads, I believe. It's made four. Four pads. We, we, we had an informal meeting with some sculptors in the area. There's people interested in donating some, so it wouldn't be an upfront cost. But my the second one that I gave you was sort of an outline of how we made a sustainable work at City. Um, we need the this it's basically a two-year loan is what we, we landed on. Um, we did a biannual competition. Um, there were members of the, the aldermen on it. There were people from the university, people from the community on the committee that, you know, when the submissions were put in, they selected the artwork. So it was very much sort of like a voice of the town, not just sort of one segment of the town. Um, and then we paid $3,500 for basically a two-year rental. Um, it, it's a very low uh, payment for the artist. We also paired it with a party, and they really loved the party. You know, like we 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 had a, a, a annual event that we just sort of snuck it in with, and they got up on stage, and they were they were noticed, and you know, and, and they really really enjoyed that. And so I feel like that was the main thing that kept kept them coming back. Um, but the way that it worked out was it was basically ten thousand dollars allotted per year by the the, the city, um, and so every two years it was twenty thousand dollars to pay thirty five hundred dollars to the artist. As well as have some money left over for things like nameplates and um, pitch and work for part of the event and festival. And we also did these publications uh, that we put around all the tourist spots in the area um, to raise awareness about the social game. And so my main goal here today is to talk about putting some sculpture downtown those four paths. But I also just wanted to raise you know your attention to the possibility of actually getting a, a sculpture trail in town very easily. Awesome. Thank you. I think we have five pedestals, but one is being used. One has a sculpture. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, one at the corner of Railroad Street um, and Main Street near the old Main Street Auto place, and then one directly across from it. Mm -hmm. and then one in front of the Masonic Temple that's populated. Right yeah, that's being used. Yeah. It should be rotated out. We talked to the artist, which is ready to take it back to. And then there's one at the cemetery on the corner of 100 C across from the spring. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was one on Main Street. I thought so too. I feel like I saw one. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Right across. Yeah, right across. Right there. Across right. from each other. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those um, two, Masonic Temple and Cold Spring across from each other. I, I think this is a very unique. Uh, and good idea that I personally support. I think there's a question of who actually owns those pedestals that is unanswered to me because they were part of a project that was solely funded by the village of Johnson. So I don't know who the owners are. And I, I don't think we can make this finite decision tonight either way, but I don't want That's to. That's Eric. <laughs> Oof, okay. Eric. Wait for it. And well, the dust is settling in. Then are they right away? Yeah, the state gave us permission to put those in. So they probably but have some regulations to how big a sculpture and whatnot is on when it has to be You know, the paths are pretty small, so they would limit the size. Yeah. <laughs> Just can't get rid of you. Who owns them? See? I recollect it was all part of the main street. Yes, that oh, that's yes. true. And I so I'm guessing it's a village. Um but they're in the state right away. Maybe we could So do we have to get wait, do we have to get approval from the state to put the put them in to begin with? And did we have to get permission to install any sculpture afterward? The, Obviously, the mouth would have had to have been included those things. As far as putting any uh, installation, I don't think that there was any sign, but so I don't remember the select board really being engaged or involved in any of that. So maybe we need clarity 
would you be receptive to coming back oh, in front yeah. of the board? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, would we ask Carl to find that out, or how are we going to find out? Just where you might know who would know, maybe. Who would know what? How do we Schools confirm? Because even if the village owns them, we could ask the village if they would be receptive to the town having the ability to place smoke. You know, we could still be an avenue. It might not be as direct, uh, but I just don't want to make decisions over something I don't even know. That is like your village. I think right. we had questions about yeah. liability and something gets vandalized. Maybe, maybe it would be better going straight to the village if they own it. The question for me is, who owns it right now? Uh, really cool idea, and definitely a sculpture park would be something I personally think would pair really well with the Arboretum, but um, we haven't consulted the committee about that at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm really looking for approval, just raising awareness, you know, putting the question out there and starting the investigation. Yeah. The Arboretum is a really good idea. I think I'm really there. surprised well, you have that idea. Oh, sorry. I haven't discussed it. <laughs> yeah, the tall Lord of right there. You don't need water for a sculpture, trust me. Maybe it'll be a water sculpture. <laughs> a water <laughs> sculpture. Perfect. Oh. Sorry, there was talk about getting water down the Arboretum. Uh, Maybe you're the Arboretum's tree board chair, Susan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you guys maybe float a possible idea of in the future if the tree board would be receptive to intermingling sculpture? Strong, the sculpture well, like a sculpture walk through the arbory. Okay. Possibly. This is not this is not coming from the select board. Basically, if you wanted to if you wanted to have something like that, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the idea of trees will sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, beards. Yeah, beards too. Yeah. 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 And we the village and tracking around, we helped spread biodiversity and that family whole week. Oh, you've already got sculpture out there. They do. Usually, become part of the trail. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. When it comes to sculpture anywhere, I'm open to it too. Like I like the ideas of these things. The, I think it comes down to if it's not on a pedestal that already exists. Like, what does that mean? Cost, infrastructure, that kind of thing. You know, the you like the garden is that it's, you pull a pad, that is there. Yeah. You do it one time and then you can re drill into it, take them out, put new ones right on it. We, we never replace the pad. Yeah. We just board new ones. No, probably every day. And they just get swapped out every couple of years or again, whatever. We, I always wanted one when they did it annually and it was too much work. It was a two year break. That was <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. that's where I would get stuck too, is like all those questions you just asked, which is why I was amazing when I found Mike because he's done this before several times. And mm -hmm. so um this is like the missing. <laughs> yeah. There, 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 there is a lot of um people think it's more it's more difficult than what it is. It's really very, very simple. The artists want their work out there. You know, like if we had one of the lowest, you know, payments around, and we still have hundreds and hundreds of applicants, you know, and it's just a matter of selecting the ones that the town and the committee think will serve the town well, and then every two years, the town can serve a new look, it gets a face look. The, the downtown one in Cleveland, where I was living, uh, they actually were buying them. The town really liked this one sculpture, and so they got together and they bought them. So now there's only four pads that change in one permit, and that's, you know, something that could be discussed if the town really liked one. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be something that was part of it, you know, from the start. Interesting. Eric, you want to say something? I was just going to make a suggestion that you pick a theme. And I know if you've been to Bennington, they had a theme one year of catamounts. And it's all these catamounts sculptures all around the, the town. 
and then there's another, another year of the moose. And so they're, they're still there. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's an annual thing or like what have you. And Charles can maybe talk to what the theme is in, in Barry, but they have a bunch of different little sculptures. Cars, the dogs, the, I don't know what the theme is, but Grant. You know, Grant. What's that? The well, theme is cars. It's both yeah. 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 Cars and animals. Cars and yeah. cars. Yeah. And that's something that we did. We had a musical theme one year. We had a, you know, a, an abstract mm -hmm. theme another year. Um, you know, other years it was more of an invitational and less of an application for an artist we knew had a lot of work that would be well received. We would invite this artist to bring five or six pieces to the mm -hmm. places. But there's a lot of possibility with it. And again, having a good representative of the representation of the town allows really the town's voice and not just a faction of the town. You know, like you get the, the discussion of what should, what, what do we want, what do we not want. That's, those are always really fun. Yeah. Let's find out cool. who owns that. We yep. So finals, we'll so. follow who up. Who finds that out is the question. Um, Carl, maybe you can take that and just. I know who you'd ask. Yeah, but he he can do some digging. He can figure it out. Certainly. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eric, could you just give me a ballpark era when the Main Street project was done? Oh, 2000. Yeah, early 2000s. Five. Okay. Wow. If I'm that committee, is that one? <laughs> I was gonna say 11, but I think you're right. I'm gonna go school. School. lay over in that. I feel like it was earlier than that because I don't think I was around town then. The one thing that uh, all throughout there is uh, I think it was you like, included benefits like, of including artists in town planning, and we just happened to have an more. opening on our planning committee. Uh, just throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> that's fun. Um, I think it might be closer to 2000, 2001. I think it's earlier than 2005, even. I like that. Yeah. Uh, you could probably find it one of the plans on the website, actually. Okay, so thank you very much for coming. This is really useful. We will get back to you, uh, and hopefully we can make it happen, or somebody can make it happen. It's not us. <laughs> okay. Carl, when you're researching that, it'd be interesting to know if state has any, because they are in that state right away. Sure, they have some. Maybe they have some. If we don't own them, what's the point of making that name? Right. You don't have. But if we do, even if we don't, if we do not own them, probably Eric will want to be. The best route would be going to the village if they own. Them. They're quite. Early. But thank you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's move on because we have a lot still to get through. Um, skate park committee status of seeking bids. Can you be any longer? We will. I'll text you in about five minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> See you later. So, quick update from what you have in the packet was Carl uh, registered the ABC time for talk about. Which is in, uh, this being one of them primarily. Uh, and he suggested, you know, you're better off having this person be a town employee, temporary yeah, part time, seasonal, whatever. Um, and, you know, especially with the pandemic, my memory is that uh, the town doesn't want to hire anybody uh, under the age 15. But Maybe that's post pandemic. Maybe that maybe are, different. Are you on your first item or second item? Oh, it's okay. Second oh. item. You already started there. Let's okay. keep going. Sure. Okay, hired. This is hiring the part time summer helper. Yep. Okay. I mean, I think that in terms of hiring some hiring somebody to help. I guess my question is, and maybe it's a question for Rosemary, is is this similar to having hiring refs or is it different than hiring refs? I think it's different. You think it's different? And, okay. And if you're hiring a seasonal employee, essentially is what you're saying. Well, yeah. 
The bug hiring season employee what? A seasonal a employee. Season. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're saying is hiring a seasonal employee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how many hours is it typically? Can you remind us? Uh, the candidate in mind, well, Mr. Pansky, uh, we, we haven't talked specifically because we, we didn't, have, I didn't, you know, I said, let's wait to see what the select board says. You know, we, years ago, we hired, we, we worked with Ashton Schreiber when he was in high school. Yeah. And it was sort of, and he was a stipend. And basically, Carl pointed out, you know what? It would be better to make it just a straight position. Fine with me. As long as it's okay with you guys to hire a student. How much did, how many, do you know how many hours they paid last year? Uh, you mean for the paid employee? Um, no, 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 no. If we had, if you had somebody doing the same function, the part time yeah. summer helper, how many hours last year? Uh, it wasn't last year. Oh, you didn't do it last year. Okay. Ashton, no, Ashton, okay. Was, Ashton was in high school. We, Ashton is the last time you've done it. That was before. Okay. 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 And that was before. COVID. That was before. Right. Anybody was. Okay. And that and that yeah. It was when COVID came. The emphasis on you know nobody under eighteen. So once Ashton turned eighteen, he became you know an employee. Um, if we can have Ronan be an employee, that's fine. Just he is not 18. Okay. He's going to be a senior. Yeah. He'll be 18. Yeah. <laughs> Within the next year. Yeah. Um, do you have this as part of your budget for skate park? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, do we have enough money to pay the current employee, Ashton, and some hours for Roman? Yes. Because a, a, other Ashton has other demands that his time is more constrained. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thoughts? So basically, you want to hire a second person. Yeah. I, Who is not 18. Who is not 18. And, and as I said here, you know, there would be no college changes, uh, et cetera. And they would work under Ashton. They would work at my direction, both Ashton. And this and Ronan would re they report to me ultimately, uh, but I probably would. It would be a three way. Let's let's leave it at that. Um, they all everybody talks to each other anyway, uh, but I'm the boss. And you already have the money to do it as a stipend. No, no as a uh, to do it as a salary. That that was Carl's recommendation. Was it? Yeah, I mean, we, we did it as, as a study that before. I guess I wasn't on the board when the original decision was made. It wasn't. <laughs> what do you mean it wasn't ever made by the board, Casey? Well, before, just that was how we did it. And I think it has to be for a worker's call. If, if, you, if you should get hurt, it has to be by uh, as an employee. Yeah, and what Casey was describing to me, it, it sounds like an employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're going to fill out a time sheet. They're going to get paid an amount based on how many hours they work. Right. And what is that if it's not an hourly? And yeah. how long has the skate park had Ashton? Uh, maybe four or five years now. First as a high school student and now as an adult. And he is on payroll. Yes. Okay. Have I ever seen a timesheet? No, he didn't have but one or two last year. Say, it's been nothing, several years. Nothing has ever poked my interest. I guess this ties for me into conversation. Uh, the beautification committee was asking for a part-time employee from last year's board. I'm not supportive of the idea. Well, because you don't want them to spend the money on it, or no, I mean it's the committee's needs change, but we need to be fair to committees. If this board is going to support committees having part-time employees, we need to allow that for all town committees. 
I don't know if we can treat those the same because they're they're different requests. Yeah. Um, this one is they're coming to us with the money in hand. The other one, I wasn't on the board at the time, but my understanding was they wanted that to be funded by the select board. Well, the, the town funds the skate park, so it would be funded by the select board either way. It's not even funded by the select board; it's funded by the tax select board. It's just. Yeah, you're, you're right. Well, my, what I meant was it's in their existing budget versus addition. Right, but, it's budgeted for. Right. Rosemary, what is the cost for, like, what would be the workhorse comp cost? It's not that high. Yeah, it's pretty low. It's, it's under 10% mm -hmm. of, of uh, the allocated. So it is. I mean, what I can tell you is that I don't know what papers you do or don't see. That's not my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but, understood. So uh, I was thinking of, okay, what have we paid Ashton to be mm -hmm. this year, well, the closing year, and it, it's 700 bucks. That's the front of that. Uh, and we have 800 budgeted next year. But we'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but to that, I guess to that point, we should make sure that whatever the time she is that Ashton or Ronan, whomever submits, does go through our approval. Yeah, so it's always gone through Brian. It, 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 I, I saw, I co-sign it, and so and it goes to Rosemary. Okay, okay. So that I gotcha. That's your. The question was the being underage. Yeah, underage. Yeah, I agree with Mark. It doesn't matter. There, like age doesn't really matter. That's your personnel line item. Yeah. As long as they're not, well, as long as they're not under 16 yeah. and, yeah. We should change that in the budget just so it more accurately reflects it. Yeah. Um, just the naming. Um, yep. 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 Okay. Um, I'm supportive of it personally. Well. So do we want to make a motion? Make it official? Do you need a motion? Make it do we know what the hourly rate is? Is that already said? Okay. It'll, it'll, it'll be close to minimum wage. I mean, and you, I, I researched it a bit. You can actually pay high school students some whack on the but we don't do that. I, typically, when the town hires an employee, I guess I'm only used to full time employees other than our rec coordinator, but we have to tell the taxpayers what they're being paid. Sure. So if you good. don't if you don't have an hourly rate in mind, I guess we can make a motion. We just haven't had that conversation. Like that. That'll come. So you're, 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 having, you're saying that to make the motion and vote on it, you need to state the hourly rate. First, that's what we've always done to be very transparent to the taxpayers, and I think that's important whether it's required or not. Okay, so minimum wage right now is thirteen eighteen an hour. Um, I think that we should set an amount up to and give Casey the authority to negotiate up to that amount. Personally, unless we want, just want to say minimum wage. And what amount do you? I would say up to fourteen an hour. About how total? Um, $5,000? No, 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 not to exceed $800. Not to exceed $800? That's what's budgeted. Okay. That's what I said. That's all I That's what's exceed $800. Okay, I didn't follow that quite So I'll make that motion that we, we um, approve <clears throat> funding for a part-time employee for the skate park up to, up to $800. Do we want that to, when does this position start? Does it run through two budget years? There, it'll, it'll start with July. Okay. So no, no. Okay. I have a really weird housekeeping question. Hold on, let him finish his motion. Yeah, up to $800 for the coming budget year, starting July 1. Okay. I'll second. To, clar to clarify, this is just to make sure you're clear, eight hundred is what is our top for all of, all salary employees. So we would never pay just one of them for hundred. But that's, but that's okay. why we put up the eight hundred. Perfect. Um. Do you want? 
is there a friendly amendment to I feel like I feel like Casey is not an employee of the town and therefore shouldn't probably have authorization to hire, but maybe we could give it to Carl or Rosemary. I would I would I would take that as a friendly amendment that Carl has the authority to hire. Can we get to my really weird housekeeping question? What? Any time that we've ever hired anybody, we do it upon a successful completion of a background check to protect the to protect oh, the taxpayer. This is sure. ultra low money. Is Who's background checking? Sure, why not? I think it's appropriate. It's an employee. Yeah. So is that an amendment too? That's an amendment. Do you have both amendments, Donna? Yeah. We don't even know if they're friendly yet. I it's from both are friendly to me. Now we know. There we go. Any other discussion? More amendments. All the we're putting them all to sleep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. But I also think that we should extend eight hundred dollars part-time town employee to the beautification committee to be fair. Um, status of seeking bids. Oh. Yes. Not in yet. <laughs> okay, well, there's that. What status? I've been in touch with the designer today. Um, he hasn't gotten any inquiries either. Uh, and both he and Carl pointed out, you know, there's no time with a date in it. Or a fee that we put out, and then perhaps we should come to that. So, we'll, do you it. want to correct it? I mean, I think that the board is the board open to them putting out a new RFP with a deadline? Deadline of August. September. I'd say, yeah, end of September. Is the thought that there are people sitting on their hands because there's no deadline, or? I, I wouldn't begin to tell you. End of September is a really long time. I, I, think, I think some will be coming in, but so maybe it's, it's, a, on that. it's an open-ended one right now, and you want yeah. us to put an expiration date on it. Yeah. Okay. Carl, did so, you have something you wanted to add? I would say uh, a deadline three weeks from the date that it's released, but it might take us a little bit of time to get our ducks in a row because of we talked about we want to get a good bidders list yeah. rather than relying on posting it on the website and the BLCT website, but get a list of contractors that might actually be interested in doing this and mailing it directly to them. Oh. Yeah, I was going to suggest July 31st. So it is a easy oh, to remember. Because that's Monday. Too soon, please. Too soon for who? For you? For, I don't know. Just think, well, if you give them a really long date, they're going to forget you exist because they're going to wait and then you're not going to. Three weeks time that we release it, that gives them time to perhaps be on vacation or dealing with something else. So we'll get it evaluated and get a bid calculated and submitted. So yeah. when are you thinking about the release date being? Well, as soon as we can get it together, um, I would ask I think you're was Mary oh. to check with Pierre to see what contractors he would recommend. Gotcha. And yeah. And we had an we've already talked about we had an experience with a contractor that I believe is from Hardwick mm -hmm. made a concrete skate plug feature. So I'll try to get that name. Yeah, I, I know there are so many women. I, I know that's the name of one theoretically, two theoretically. But I think, yeah, you know, I, I'm flipping, I'm coming around to, to the three weeks. So it's a. Could you recommend that date, Carl, roughly? That we would have it out? Yeah. Ballpark ish. Let's see, I'm here tomorrow, but we won't get it done tomorrow. Then I'm back the following Thursday, which is what, June? Uh, the 29th. Uh, yeah. We'll That's try to Thursday. do it, get it then. Because what I'll do is I'll try to get some balls rolling while I'm yeah. away. One, two, three. Yes. 
I still think the end of the I still think the end of the month because you're in the middle of a big holiday week. Like July, the 4th of July is the week after what you're talking about. So July 31st still looks good, right? Ish. I think so. Is that does that sound reasonable, Carl? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Motion. July 31st is just I need a motion or not? Go for it. Yes. Motion to repost skate park feature RFP with an expiration deadline date or whatever of July 30th, 2023. Okay, we have a motion. July 31st. First, 31st, first. Donna. We have a motion. A second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, Casey. Um, okay. Planning Commission's process to nominate an, an administrative officer for farm based code. Five minutes. So, I guess the real question is we didn't get the three potential candidates from the Planning Commission. But the real question is to select board. Just want to meet with those three or have the Planning Commission present one. I would be fine with the Planning, planning Commission presenting one candidate. I would also. For nomination. You gotta say it, Shane. I would approve that. I think we got a consensus of the board. Next topic. Is the no, not next next topic yet. Is the planning commission? Have we heard from them? Are they open to doing this? I think we heard from Paul, didn't we? I believe that the email um, asked if the three names was okay, or did the select board want them to narrow it down to one with the nomination? Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Thank you. Did they provide us with the three names or did they just say they, okay. Is that an email that you sent to us already? Or? They provided us with suggestions, but I didn't feel like they were, I didn't feel like they were necessarily all willing. Right. I and felt so like they were ideas. Any of these people. That's yeah. Oh, at least all the okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. So I think we should, yeah. If we can go back to Paul, that would be good. So we're, Okay, cool. Yes. I'm, Single name. Yeah. You haven't heard them, and that's why. I read it, and I, was, I remember reading it, and I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> Are these suggestions? I think they were. Okay. Um, consider renewing, uh, approving the renewal of a cannabis license. Five minutes. No changes to the license. I know no changes. Thank you. I think the same same amount of time here um, will be a year on uh, June 30th. Are you are you up and running at this point? Yeah, we're actually in our fourth row. Nice. Right now, so it's June 30th last year. And anybody would like to come down and see, we're pretty proud of what we're doing. Um, and see an indoor grow facility. Cool, thank you. You were already set up in the buggy man or are you somewhere else right now? Uh, no, we we um, had a building right beside the buggy man, the green building there between Dollar General and the buggy man. Yep. That's the current 500 square feet of canopy in there. And uh, we had purchased the buggy man, so I've actually brought back uh, my family's homestead, part of the, the homestead. So. That's where I was born and brought up right there. That's exciting. Oh, wow. right. Yeah. So uh, congratulations. Part of the buggy man is actually my parents' convenience store. They had a truck garden and vegetables, and that's where I grew up. And then uh, Mark and Eddie put the posted bean on the back. So it is kind of exciting to get that property back and start selling vegetables there again. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I would like you to buy Dollar General back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe something. Yeah. It'd be a great purpose. Motion to approve the renewal of Vermont Green Castle State Cannabis License. Second. Sorry, I'm not going to cut you off. Just... Motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see what we have. Consider setting a date to meet with the ATV club. 
Spencer, sorry, it's taken so long. What was the topic? Oh. <clears throat> you can go ahead, Spencer. Oh, hello. Um, so yeah, we're just um, we're looking to, you know, there's been previous roads that were open for quite a while, and you know, if you're a lot of talk about getting revenue into the town, and we're looking to try to get it back into the town, possibly looking to meet with a select board about setting a meeting, um, so we can open up some roads that we had in the past that didn't cause much issues that we know of. So and get some revenue into the town for the ATVs without costing the taxpayers money, any money. So, but yeah, I mean, like, there's a couple specific roads that have been open before, but I don't know if that's discussion for this tonight's meeting or setting up a meeting date for the future. Let's discuss that. Yes. This is just to pick a date. Um, if the board wants to invite TM ATV to discuss broader things, it's just picking a date. Right. Okay. So, uh, board, is there appetite to talk about opening up roads? Here's the thing the thing is that my thing with opening up roads is that. We haven't actually closed down any roads that aren't part of the ordinance. And if we're going to open up roads, it actually means changing the ordinance. And if the board wants to take time to have a discussion about changing the ordinance, then okay. But I'm not interested in having a discussion about opening up roads without changes to an ordinance. And I'm not super excited about the idea of changing the ordinance because I'm not super excited about all that is entailed in the work that will go into that personally. Um, that's where my that's where I'm at right now. Because I think that changing access to roads that that deviate from what the ordinance says right now is a bad idea from a liability standpoint. And frankly, it. I don't know that the select board by the current ordinance could give access to any roads for this season. No, I don't think that like time wise, we would have it in our I, calendar. Don't they have to be posted if there is a variance by a certain date in certain locations. So it's a broader conversation about next year, I guess. Mm hmm. I agree. Which we can have. We can have that discussion. Do we know which road? I mean, maybe we have a discussion to find out some maybe to find out what roads they're thinking of. I mean, right now I I'll tell you, I don't see I see eight V You know, whether the roads are closed or not, just come right down the paved roads. So I'm not convinced. I, enforcement is still a big deal. Yeah. But. And I think there's a difference between, like, for me, there is a distinct difference between a resident or non resident, for that matter, riding their ATV illegally and discussions about club access. I agree. Because the club is not necessarily, people who are doing this are not necessarily part of the club, to be fair. Like, I think that's a important thing to state also our state and the club has been partners in helping us find some of the people who are doing you know the, the bad actors in the past true yep yep yeah um, i'm certainly in favor of um having a meeting with them figuring out which roads uh they would like to see opened and figuring out whether we can or cannot um I, I think there was also some talk about incongruence between our ordinance and state and law in the past, and I'm not sure whether that's been cleared up, but um, it seems that like we might I need to know. reopen the ordinance at some point. Wait, what did you say? I had I had heard that there was some incongruence between the ordinance and state law that was creating some confusion. Um, well, state, the statute says Basically, if you don't have your own ordinance, then 
there is law in place around yeah. ATV use, but you have to have your own. It doesn't, it's not a conflict. It's okay. that if you don't have your own ordinance that would trump the law, the, the state law, if you don't have anything that would trump state law, then state law is what pertains to your municipality. Okay. Okay, so I guess more clear to them, but uh, so. Anyway, if we okay. want to discuss it, uh, I would say the first meeting in August makes sense because our first meeting in July, we've already discussed it, kind of needs to be short. We need to set the tax rate. Um, our second meeting in July, I don't know exactly what that looks like. Um, but being that I don't think we can change anything for this riding season, I don't think August is pushing it so far out where... So we won't have time to talk about it. Uh, what are other people's thoughts? Oh, I guess it makes sense for you. Whenever you want. Beth is deep in thought. It's not that deep. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking about the timing of everything on the calendar. August is probably the best time. I just don't know. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I think sometime in August is the best time. Don't know that I want to commit to the first meeting. Well, I, but the second have, meeting is usually Jason. Do you have Spencer's email address? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if we put them on the agenda, we could email Spencer and Spencer, Chad. are you open? I don't know if I have Chad's though. Yeah. I have to look. I do okay. Um are either meeting date okay with you, either the first Monday or the third Monday of August? Um, do you know? Yeah, Mondays are usually pretty open. Um, uh, yeah, either the first or the third should be fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Let us, actually, if you don't mind, what we'll do is we'll try to in July, we'll have a mid July, after our July meeting, we'll have a better idea what will be on the first and third uh, Mondays meetings for August. And we can firm up which of those dates would be the best fit. For having a discussion, if that works with you for you, no, that's fine. I, was, I mean, if it's nothing, if I, I get it. You got to change the ordinance. Um, if the if the sidewalk goes that route, if the are at and roads, but if we could get it, you know, hopefully in August, so maybe we can have this next year either way. You know, yep, we can give our members, but if it goes either way, just so because I know it takes you got to send it out for vote and everything like that, so. But yeah, nope. Yeah. It uh, that sounds good to me. But I'll look out for the email for it. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Spencer. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Talk to you later. Bye. Uh. Okay. Village of Johnson. Um. Oh, the the coal adjustment. Uh, the village trustees and judging by. Their agenda for tomorrow night's meeting uh, are interested in setting their COLA adjustment um, for village employees that are non union. Historically, the two boards get together in the late fall uh, and they come to an agreement on rate of COLA. Uh, for Susan and Rosemary, and historically there's been a handshake agreement that the town honors that for the remainder of the town employees that are non-union and the village honors it for the remainder of the village employees that are non-union. Um, I am not interested in setting a uh, full increase at this time. Uh, we do not know exactly what the health insurance increase will be, and that's generally a big part of that discussion. But also... Um, my mother-in-law is a village employee, and I can remove myself completely from the rest of this conversation if anybody thinks that does create a uh, conflict of interest. So I guess I already gave my piece and not want to do it now, but <laughs> well, I have the same. I don't think we know enough. We don't I I don't I think it's too early to be setting setting um prices right now. We typically look at this in the fall. I mean, typically look at it based on um, the indexes and just see what the indexes are telling us to help 
inform decisions about pay. So I would prefer not to address it either. And I really worry, I hope it doesn't create it. I hope it isn't a conflict in any way. Um, because in the office for Rosemary and crew, um, but I don't think that we're in a position where we should be looking at it as early as right now. I didn't know anything about it until I saw the agenda. I'm assuming because they're going for electric increase. Yeah. Okay. Is why they're doing it now. So they haven't known where. Now, what's the process of going for an electric increase? Electric rate increase? Yeah. They, have, they filed it with the Public Service Board on Friday. It goes in effect 40, 30 or 45 days. So they filed their expected increase before tomorrow night's meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Electricity is so fun. It sounds like they already know what they're going to propose raising because they already filed it. Is that, I guess we don't need to really talk much more. Right. Proper order for them to do it that way? Does it really matter? It's not our board. Not our That's board. That's true, but yeah. Not our board. So we should just all just be aware that some staff is likely going to find out what their adjustments will be. Don't know when they'll take place or if they'll take place for that matter. Um, don't know anything for sure, but we should just be aware. And typically it would inform and direct what we do for the town. But I just don't feel like we can be put in that position right now. I would like a full list of non-unionized town employees. Because I thought that I knew Can you all give of that? Them, but I just found out today that we have <laughs> another one that works for the skate park as a part-time employee. Ask them. He's been for several years. So is there a list that's easily accessible? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many others are going to be on there. Uh, I got more recreation people. Can you create, would people who get paid for um, roughing and that kind of thing be on the uh, on the payroll output? Uh, we did like a full payroll report for the year? No. Because no, they're paid they're, a stipend, they're, they're not a town yeah. right? But they're coded. It's something I'm, where Dean and I are discussing. Okay. Okay. It's going to be hard if you're literally finding people to ref during a game. Right. <laughs> Which is what happens. Yeah. I know because I found some for him last year. No. They're no, not. literally during a game when you pull a kid out of the stand saying, hey, you can ref, they're not an employee. But they get paid. They are. But you're adding liability on the town when you do that. What if they make a bad call? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, they do. Why haven't, why haven't they fall and break their leg? I feel they make a bad call, they could get a book. <laughs> um, <laughs> <it's> true. true. <laughs> you grew up with okay. <laughs> are you a hockey? Are you a hockey fan? Uh, no, it's true. Uh, um, I guess the full list isn't important anytime soon. But... It would be nice if we had an idea by the meeting. When we, when the town decides. No. no, we're not. Okay. Are we done with that one? I think so. I think we moved on. We're as done as we can be. Okay. Executive session. Um, Oh, what do we need exec executive session for? What is our um, executive session item? What do we need to be going in for, Carl? We have three personnel items. Oh, yeah, yeah. Person uh, items. Then a report on the legal opinion. Okay, so we have personnel review. Which one is that? Uh, it's follow up to the last week's meeting. Yeah, well, what's the state statute? Oh, sorry, I don't. Hold on, I got it. 
That's A1 for legal opinion and A3 for personnel. A1 sounds right. The other no, the other, yeah, the, it is the other way around. A1 I is personnel. I you the whole time. Oh, yeah. Donna. Yes. Okay. A1 for personnel. Let's do personnel first. We need to come, go out and come back in for the. Um, do we expect any action coming? Actions coming out of potentially uh, sessions? Potentially so, out uh, of the review. Is that? Hmm. Do we want Donna to come back, or can you email her? No, I can just email her. Okay, so we can go out and come back. And... Well, she wants to come back, but so, I doubt it. Right, Donna? Legal opinion, which is a one. Sure, I don't care. I'm checking. You're the smart legal opinion was A3. Oh, 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 you're, oh, you're fair. A1. So you're asking about the order. I don't care which okay. order. Uh, so I motion to enter into executive session as allowed by the one VSA 313A3 to discuss a legal opinion inviting Carl and potentially Rosemary. So is legal opinion the one that we have to go to two-part motion? I think. Yes, Donna, what is it? Because <laughs> uh, it's privileged information uh, by the attorney-client privilege. So it's in there. It's all in the Okay, motion. all in one motion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. All of those in favor? Hi. Nine nine. Personnel. Yep. Nine one. Uh, no action coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, executive session. Um, I motion to enter into two executive session as allowed by one BSA three thirteen a one to discuss uh, personnel matter. Inviting Carl and Rosemary. I second that. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. I just have it. We're in executive session at 9 10. Mm -hmm. Out of this executive session at 9 34. Do we have a motion coming out of executive session? Uh, I guess I will make a motion to purchase a gift certificate in the sum of $200 for uh, Susan Pinker for the additional work involved in the town administrator transition. I'll second that motion. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Are there any other motions? Do you want an, another motion, Beth? Yes, please. Um, do we motion for Beth to discuss uh, potential compensation for added workload with a town employee? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, it is 9.37 and we are adjourned.